Hi there, this is Andrew Brody with Yokogawa, and today I'd like to talk to you about how to get the OPC server up and running for the Stardom process automation controller and RTU. So what I have up right now is the general specification. This is just going to give you some details on what the server is capable of. It's a GS34P02Q61 dash and then just depending on uh, what version 01e.pdf that's uh, the document you'd probably need if you're looking for the general specification once again it's right here and in the general specification there's some key things to point out so as of uh, late August 2013 it's a data access server 2.05a compatible it's also an alarm and event server 1.10 compatible so those are some of the things you're going to need to know in terms of uh, what it supports based on uh, clients and then once again this guy will take you through all the specifics of it in terms of what st the Stardom OPC server is capable of. Okay, So that's the first document that's probably going to be of interest to you. The second document is this. It's Instruction Manual 34P02Q93-01E this uh, helps you get it installed so you're gonna need this or need this video that you're watching now in order to install the OPC server so let me kind of uh, show you the the key things in here so if we uh, go down to the table of contents you're gonna see where it asks you to uh, install the OPC server. There's some contents on it. So it's on the second page here. Configuration procedure if OPC server is used. So it's going to kind of go through how to go ahead and install the OPC server. Okay, so right down here configuring the OPC server. So 521. So now I'm going to kind of take you through what it tells you to do. So let's go over here got a virtual machine up here running the Stardom software and the uh, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna want to make sure you uh, actually go ahead and install the OPC server and the OPC server comes on a DVD I've got it mounted right now it's part number NT203 AJ this is the FCN FCJ installation media and if I open this up, let me show you what you need to install. So of course you already needed stuff like uh, Resource Configurator, Logic Designer, and its libraries. All those are necessary to get a program up and running on the Stardom unit. But uh, here's some other things that you'd probably want to do. You can install the simulator. It'll run without a license for 30 minutes at a crack. And this uh, simulator is capable of being used with the OPC server. You're also going to want to go ahead and install this guy. Install FCN FCJ OPC server for Windows. Now this is a purchased option so you're going to have to have purchased a license and you're going to get a little key code that it's going to ask you for when you go ahead and install it. If you want to do redundant communications you're going to have to have purchased that option as well and that way you can do redundant network communications via OPC. And Then the last thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and install the FCN FCJ IT security tool. This is going to make it uh, easy for you to set all the little security settings necessary for all the uh, DCOM and uh, other security type services that are required in the background. It'll, it'll just help tighten up your system and I'll show you what that looks like when we get going here. So I've already gone ahead and installed it but the install is actually fairly straightforward. It's the actual configuration that you need to do. So what the manual is going to tell you to do is you're going to browse to where the OPC server is installed and by default it goes to the Yokogawa directory on the C drive under FCN FCJ OPC DA server. There's going to be a uh, folder here called config. In that folder there's going to be a comma separated file called fcxcnf. This is uh, pretty much the key to getting this all to work. So in this you can see there's semicolons. That denotes 
that uh, that line is commented out. And so when you first get this file, you're going to see a commented out line here. So what you can do is you can give your stardom units a name, and then you put their corresponding IP addresses down. And then once you do, these will become uh, browsable within the stardom OPC server. Okay, so you got to make sure you do this. It's a comma separated variable file. Make sure you leave it that way. Make sure you put these in and get rid of the semicolon on it. You can name them whatever you want and uh, just make sure they have a valid IP address corresponding to them. And so uh, make sure once again when you save it, you save it as a CSV file. So I'm going to close that out. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is since you installed that security tool, you're going to want to go under uh, FCN, FCJ, and you're going to want to go to Support Tools, and you're going to want to run this guy, the IT Security File Registration. This will go ahead and uh, everything that you've installed has a little security file associated with it. It's going to go ahead and register that with the IT Security Tool. Okay, and once you've done that, you can go here to Yokogawa Security and run the IT security tool. And you can just go here, set up, and uh, essentially what I did is uh, you can kind of read documentation on this, but I'm running kind of a standalone PC here, kind of like a one-off server. I could be connecting off to, of course, lots of stuff on the network, but I set up my security model, a standard model with standalone management. If I hit details here, it's going to show me kind of uh, some of the settings that are going to apply. Remember, if uh, you didn't do that registration step I showed you first, a lot of this isn't going to show up. It's going to be pretty much blank. So it's going ahead and loading up all those registered definition files. And then once those come up, you can kind of pick and choose which ones you actually want to implement on your system. But it can do stuff like set your COM policies, that's uh, important for OPC. It can set some of your other stuff like disabling USB storage. So it's just kind of a nice little tool for quickly uh, implementing good security practices on your system. And you can go ahead and run that to its conclusion. I've already ran it on mine. Okay. Now the next thing that it's going to ask you to do is once you've done the CSV file configuration, once you've done the security tool, it's going to ask you to reboot. So you can go ahead and reboot. If you've already ran the security tool in the past and all you're doing is, say, uh, updating the CSV file, then I'll show you a little trick that'll save you a reboot on your system. So say you've gone in and edit, edited the CSV file and added a couple new stardom units to your system. Well, instead of the recommended reboot that it says in the instruction manual, you can actually go into your control panel, go to Systems and Security, Administrative Tools, and go ahead and uh, open up your services. There's a service called ExaBossD. If you stop this and then restart it, it'll load in those configuration files. So that'll kind of stop your OPC connection, load in the new IP addresses, and then you should be good to go. So let's just kind of show you what that's going to look like here. So I'm going to stop it. If you noticed up here in my OPC Quick Client, everything immediately kind of went offline. So yes, if you have any SCADA packages attached to it or OPC clients attached to it, you're going to lose the connection. So just be aware of that. But at least it's saving you a reboot. And then I can go ahead and start here. Now that I'm started back up, if I got an OPC system, I can just go ahead and do a... Uh, in this case, I'm using Kepware's OPC Quick Client. I went and did a connect to the server, and you can see everything's back and running again. So I kind of reconnected. So that's kind of neat there. And, and you can see I've got a few different values coming into the OPC Quick Client. Let's say I wanted to add some new ones to it. I could start from scratch here. I'm going to go ahead see how I got local machine browsable you can see here I've got the Yokogawa stardom DA stardom FCX.1 I can pick that I can go ahead and add a new group 
add a new item. Make sure it shows up in here if you're using the uh, Kepware uh, Quick Client. Kepware Quick F Client is a uh, free download from uh, Kepware, and you can go OK. You can see it's coming in now. Not very exciting. It's got kind of a zero value in it. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and pick something maybe that's a little more exciting. Make sure it's up here. Okay, and we can see, you know, definitely there's a value there. It's showing its quality bit is good. There's another tool, if you don't have the OPC Quick Client, that you could kind of do a quick check on to see if uh, your OPC is up and running with Stardom. And it's this OPC Connection Confirm tool. That's Start All Programs, Yokogawa Exa, right here, OPC Connection Confirm. And you're going to want to open it up. It's going to start on the EXA OPC tab. Go to the PROG ID tag. Make sure DA is selected. And then if you just kind of scroll down, they're, they're a little long right now, but you're going to look for something that says Yokogawa EXA DA Stardom FCX. Then you're going to go ahead and do a start on that. It's going to pop up with a little thing saying it's looking for a CSV file. Don't really need to worry about that on this pass. It's going to go through all the way until it says, hey, uh, I need an item ID. It was kind of looking for that in the comma separated variable file. And that comma separated variable file, you can go ahead and make it, but what it's looking for is something like this. It's looking for a full item ID. So in this case, I'm going to go FCX01 exclamation mark main dot PIC one three five dot PV dot value so that's whatever we named it in the CSV file period the name of the program and then the full dotted name of the variable, PIC135 PV value. So in that case, that was a complex data type. If it's a uh, kind of just a regular data type, it would just be FCX01 exclamation mark main. And then say if the name of the variable was sign, you'd just go sign and put sign in there. Something like this. Okay. And then once you do and hit OK, it's going to go through and you should see that it su succeeded all the way. If you take a look in here, you're going to see that your whatever your value was at the given point for that point was quickly pulled. So this is just another way of making sure that the OPC server is up and running on your system and everything's functioning properly. So this is Andrew Brody with Yokogawa. I hope this has kind of showed you how to get the Stardom OPC server up and running, how to use it with the Kepware Quick client, as well as uh, if you wanted to check with the OPC connection confirm utility, as well as uh, over here if you want to kind of save yourself a reboot after editing the CSV file, you can go here and uh, start and stop the uh, Exaboss D service. So take care and have a great day.